Hi guys, uh, welcome to the Linux channel. Quite often whenever you do customization of Linux kernel or else uh, if you are doing custom compilation of uh, Linux kernel under the you know, processor types and features, uh, you can find an interesting option called as a preemption model. So in this episode, I would like to discuss about uh, various uh, preemption models exist in Linux kernel with respect to whatever research I have done. Because just in case if you refer its uh, documentation, it just uh, generally discusses about this concept and uh, there can be some sort of misunderstanding. It is not just, it's just a hint as such. You can find it in its uh, documentation of the you know make menu config uh, part as such whereas in the real world it really depends on what sort of hardware you are using with respect to what sort of uh, load you are uh, putting on to your uh, device or your uh, linux uh, system as such so this is what exactly i want to discuss because i have this uh, i have almost done uh, research on uh, uh, you know very uh, low end uh, mobile uh, computing chips as well as raspberry pi uh, hardware as well as on uh, something like intel NAC and as well as uh, a, you know uh, higher and uh, desktop as well as high high end uh, uh, Xeon uh, server processor and also a couple of high end uh, AMD uh uh, multi-core uh, processors and uh, stuff like that so whereas uh, i have figured out uh, there is something uh, it is completely different than what they exactly hint about uh, uh, each option in its uh, documentation so I want to keep this episode very simple. I just don't want to much uh, focus on what exactly preemption model is all about because this is something you can anyway, you know, read about it in your operating system basics and uh, in your uh, uh, test books uh, with respect to operating system and as well as, uh, you know, some of the Linux uh, kernel uh, internal uh, books and uh, things about it as such. Whereas uh, I may take an exclusive video about, uh, you know, exactly what exactly preemption is and uh, stuff like that. Whereas in this episode, I just want to shoot in a way that assume you know what exactly preemption is but you are kind of confused exactly which option to choose so in spite of watching this video i strictly recommend when you do customization of your kernel for a specific need it can be a nas server or it can be some you know network uh, firewall device or it can be some sort of a vpn device or uh, something like a file encryption device or something like that so whenever you do customize option of uh, your linux kernel you can just check which option it suits well sometimes you need to do a trial and error method you need to compile once in the option 2 which is desktop mode sometimes you need to do trial and error with respect to either to choose option 1 which is the server mode or else uh, low latency desktop so it really depends because it is not something exactly what they say in the guide which works as such. so before getting into this much in depth i just want to roll back and uh, just a little discuss about uh, the preemption model uh, feature introduced in the linux kernel so uh, right before uh, 2.4 uh, 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 kernel version it is something preemption is kind of supported uh, in user space uh, uh, processes as such so whereas in kernel space it is not going to much you know uh, it is not something it doesn't exist as so eventually down the lane uh, through 2.6 and uh, you know in the upcoming uh, future uh, uh, versions of the linux kernel down after that uh, you know preemption model is introduced and as well as uh, you know the preemption model is uh, kind of immature initially and then it has been made mature so this is the exact reason uh, people are quite afraid uh, to choose uh, even preemption model itself as such so let alone uh, we think about something like a hyper uh, preemption mode something like this as such there is a simple difference you have to understand if you choose the option one it is almost like you, have, you don't have any preemption whereas option two it is you know medium level of preemption whereas option three is hyper level of uh, you know preemption so that uh, you get more uh, you know preemption done by doing that uh, you, you are almost rising the you know frequency of uh, you know uh, handling various tasks trying to handle it simultaneously so that's what exactly happened so this is the reason if you are building some th some sort of a real time uh, uh, embedded uh, os uh, uh, you know kind of uh, device or something like that where you need some sort of a smooth application multi uh, application performance or something like that you can choose uh, the preemption uh, model as a preemptive kernel which also indicates uh, a low latency desktop as such. so whereas <laughs> when you see the guide they kind of hint if you are uh, looking for raw cpu processing power and if you are looking at uh, extremely good throughput you need to choose you know no forced preemption whereas in this case it generally happens uh, the scheduler generally it uh, shuffles across each 
you know tasks and such so in this case also you it is going to support multitasking but it is going to happen much in a leisure way whereas in the option 2 and option 3 because preemption is supported it is going to do in a much more frequent uh, basis as so in this case uh, this is the exact reason you are going to get smooth application performance because no single application is trying to hold uh, you know the execution context of your uh, cpu as so in this way it is going to give the smooth performance but not necessarily this is going to be applicable for every kind of hardware if you choose to use any modern high end uh, you know desktop chip or uh, a xeon server if you to choose uh, no forced preemption and if you are uh, putting extreme amount of load in uh, something in kernel processing or uh, uh, something happening like uh, encryption or compression happening within the kernel space then what really happens is you may feel sometimes the option 2 which is voluntary kernel preemption is going to be much faster and it is actually going to give you a better throughput in the bandwidth in terms of you know packet processing and uh, if you choose to use option one it is going to be a little more sluggish as such. so this is exactly contradictory with respect to what you find it in uh, you know linux kernel uh, guide which you can find it in you know make menu config operation as such. so this is what something i thought of sharing because i have done extensive uh, experiments with uh, gigabit speeds as well as uh, 100 mbps speeds on uh, various kinds of processors and i found uh, when uh, when whenever a context you are using a extremely good hardware platform you don't need to much worry about you know option a and uh, even more i can uh, suggest you not to use this option although it is kind of misleading term if you if you get actually ubuntu uh, uh, in ubuntu uh, download its kernel is uh, compared uh, with the default option as uh, desktop mode which is voluntary kernel preemption whereas you may get confused what if uh, i make this uh, system into a sort of server whether i need to compile it with this option as such but not necessarily it is true in case if you have you know fairly good amount of hardware system and uh, you have or else you have a server uh, platform with uh, many cores of you know uh, essentially good uh, per core performance of this uh, cpu cores then you should never <laughs> select this option one because it is going to effectively degrade your performance it is also going to effectively affect your throughput and may affect your latencies also so in that case i i would like to request you to stick with the option two whereas in case if you are uh, uh, build if you are very sure if your load on the system is very much moderate or it is a little bit below the you know uh, average level and you have a very good system there are chances that you can almost uh, choose to compile it in preemptive kernel as so this name although th even this is preemptive kernel as well as this is preemptive kernel but this is more hyper versus you know this is more intermediate so in a way i can just uh, depict it in a simple way so assume you have almost like no preemption so uh, you know the switch will happen once in a while between two tasks whereas if you have you know preemption mode enabled it is going to happen much you know frequently whereas in case if you have selected option 3 it is going to happen even more at higher rate as well. so this is going to happen at much higher rate so as you can understand to tackle this kind of a rate you need to have very good uh, you know cpu computational power to handle this kind of rate of load because each time when it does context switching the biggest problem with this case is cache which uh, you know assume these two tasks i have say task one and task two you can just imagine it's a uh, you know couple of processes or something like that so it is just uh, you know i can just uh, denote as task because usually in linux kernel uh, you know this execution context is called as task as so i can just denote it as task so you have say a processor with some amount of cache in the processor See, every time such you know context switching happens assume let's just not much bother about multi core processor let's just bother about it as uh, you know couple of cores or it as uh, you know a single core with a hyper threading enabled or something like that so in that case one can easily understand it does such frequent uh, you know context switching what happens is its cache is going to be limited and each time it does context switching it has to refresh its cache and it has to load the new data and it has to swap in between these two states and this is what exactly causes the confusion in the 
the system as well. so that is the reason you have to be very careful in terms of choosing this preemptive kernel and this is almost like a warning sign and if you are a kernel specialist and if you are uh, 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 capable of doing custom compilation of kernel you should not just stick with the guide you have to compile it once in this mode test your uh, performance of your system you can uh, have something like uh, encryption done in OS level which is like encryption done in uh, Linux kernel uh, software layer whereas uh, in certain cases it can be some sort of file compression on a you know compressed file system done in Linux kernel layer and uh, things like that so assume let's just uh, ignore the fact that uh, you know anything is such things are done in the hardware so in that case you need raw processing power at the same time in case if you have multiple applications which are trying to get hold of the CPU then you need to choose the right preemption model so this is exactly the reason uh, when you uh, check the documentation about these options in the make menu config you can find uh, about no pre forced preemption they, they just mention it as a traditional linux preemption model and it is geared towards a throughput and uh, things like that and uh, this is something select this uh, option if you are building a server or something but this is a kind of a case which is kind of true for old processors and if you are uh, you know building it for some sort of a mobile device with uh, very less applications or something like that whereas in, even in that case you have to really benchmark your system you have to see the nature of your system as so with multiple apps just in case if you are compiling this for some sort of raspberry pi project you have to make sure it has a very good uh, you know responsive uh, mode as so that uh, if you are opening one uh, you know application and uh, suddenly you are doing a context switch of another application it just you know happens a little smoothly as such so that you can uh, have very less amount of lag in between these context switches at the same time you can also ensure uh, if there are some multiple processors uh, processors are working within the raspberry pi everything gets that uh, you know uh, needed attention as such so it can be a nas server which you are building or it can be some sort of uh, video surveillance it can be some uh, iot device or something as such so be very careful when you select this option of course you are going to get very good throughput but at the same time it may completely ignore of your other uh, tasks or your other user space processes as such. so that's the exact thing which is uh, you know kind of misleading as such you are going to get maximum raw cpu processing power which is mentioned in the documentation i just uh, uh, wrote it whatever in the documentation so that i can just uh, you know recollect these points and discuss in this video as such. so it is going to give very good throughput but provided is that only single task you are executing in that system or if you are you know executing multiple tasks then be aware this is going to be quite dangerous as such so in that way you can always safely use option 2 because unlike the old linux kernel the preemption model uh, which is supported in the linux kernel at this point of time is extremely mature it is extremely stable well tested and well uh, you know bug fix uh, and uh, it is well maintained in a better way to put forward so that way you can safely choose uh, option 2 which is uh, voluntary kernel preemption or in other words it is called as desktop mode as such whereas if you are very keen in terms of improving your performance and if you want it at almost like a real time performance you are taking some you know some kind of uh, scientific data you want to analyze some scientific data in real time and uh, you want to build some sort of embedded device or something uh, related to timers it can be some sort of a smart watch or something like that i mean something very uh, sensitive with respect to timers and uh, something which triggers with respect to you know time based events and uh, something it has to happen immediately once interrupt happens and something it has to happen immediately or some such kind of time time sensitive you know uh, devices whenever you are building you can experiment with this option but in case it is quite sluggish then you can switch back to option 2 as such because in this case the generic documentation tells it is like you know more preemption at all kernel code at the same time it gives smooth application performance even when the system is under load but with lower throughput but still not necessarily it is going to be the truth if you have very good processor or very good hardware platform with very good ram speed so this is not a case where uh, quite often everyone knows you know linux kernel doesn't uh, you know consume much memory unless until you are installing some you know bunch of vms into your linux system as such other than that its memory requirement is quite limited as such. so here it's not a case of how much memory it occupies here it's a case of 
what is the speed of your ram is it ddr4 and what is your ram latency levels and your ram uh, speed in terms of its uh, megahertz and versus your uh, ddr3 ram versus your any kind of if it is a mobile device then it is a mobile uh, uh, memory chips so, you know which is going to operate at much lower speeds than you know your desktop or uh, server ram so, so, so this is what it is going to be affected when it comes to this option as such whereas if you have very good hardware and if you have medium or low workloads you can safely to choose option 3 but at the same time please take additional precautions test it before you uh, you know finalize this option is suited when you do compilation of your linux kernel source so that's all guys for this episode i hope you guys uh, liked watching this video just in case if you have any questions uh, and uh, comments you can post it in youtube uh, comments so, so thank you once again for watching this video stay tuned